Okay, my name is Chris Toomey, um, and my project uh, solves the problem of something called primer design. Uh, it's a biological application uh, used all the time um, in biology. And basically, what my code is going to do is it's going to take uh, some template DNA, so something like this. Um, it's going to be longer. Um, and it's going to design these two little red sequences, uh, a forward primer and a reverse primer, um, two primers. Um, so basically, these primers are used in biology in something called a PCR reaction. So you take your template DNA and you take your primers, and then uh, DNA is created um, to, to match the template DNA off that. So this is a little schematic of what PCR does. Basically, after cycles one, two, and three, the template DNA increases exponentially as you make one from you go from cycle one to two, you have two templates from cycle one to uh, two to three, you have four templates, and so on and so forth. So the template DNA will increase exponentially. So basically what you get at the end of this reaction um, is a ton of uh, the template DNA that you want. Um, so I'm going to design the primers to make that. Now one other thing you could do with the primers is install something called a restriction sequence. A restriction sequence is used when you want to clone the gene into a vector or a plasmid. Um, this is used then to put into something like bacteria, and then the bacteria will actually express the protein that the, the gene you tried to clone um, encodes for. So my code can actually add on these restriction sequences. You can see here, um, this person is adding two different ones. Uh, one of the lim limitations of my code is you can only add one, so each primer will get the exact same um, restriction sequence. Uh, this is a limitation, however, this is the most common applica application, so it's not a huge limitation. Using two different restriction sequences is pretty uncommon. All right, so I want to get into the code. Um, here's the entire thing. Um, I'm using two libraries. It happens to be that both of the libraries are for display purposes. Um, however, they're really useful. Um, this tabulate library, which you'll see, um, displays a nice uh, table format of all the information I make. Um, and this PyDNA library is actually very vast. I'm using one module of it, um, and it shows a nice representation of what um, I designed for my primers. So I'll pull up Sublime Text and show you what I'm going to throw in there first. Um, I'm going to just uh, put in template.txt. Uh, you'll notice that this is a FASTA file. Um, so we've used FASTA files a lot in class, and basically um, my code can recognize this and skip the first line um, because um, we don't really need it. And the important stuff is the actual uh, sequence itself. So if I go ahead and run this, um, it's going to ask me to put in my template file. So I'll put in template.txt. And then it's going to ask me if I want to uh, add a restriction sequence, as I was talking about before. Um, right now, I'm not going to add one just for the purposes of showing uh, just the baseline code and how it runs. So all I'm going to do is click Enter. And then it's going to come up with a bunch of stuff about the two primers that it made. So it made a forward primer and a reverse primer. Um, here's the sequence of them. And here's the GC content. So it's telling me how much G's, G's and C's are in the primer and the melting temperature. Both of these parameters are very useful uh, information for PCR. Um, and I, I, I made them by uh, some external functions that I uh, created. Now, um, this table is being created by the tabulate library, like I had said. So the tabulate library allows you to put in all the information that you want and then the headers that you want to go underneath. Um, and then it prints it out just really nicely in this formatted table. So it's a great library that I found. Um, it was totally new to me, but it's something useful that I learned. Um, and then the PyDNA library that I was talking about is really, really useful. Um, basically, it can generate um, this PCR product. So it uses uh, this PCR function here. Um, and what you see is your template file, that's your template right there, and then the primer you designed. So you can see this is actually my reverse primer, T, T, A, T, 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 A, T, T. And it's showing it bound to the template. Um, so that's a really useful thing for the user to look at to verify that their uh, primer that uh, the software made is actually working correctly. Um, so that's great. Um, also here I have the reverse primer, A, T, G, T, C, A, T, G, T, C, and these lines are indicating where it bound to the template. So that's a really useful thing. I'm actually going to play this again so I can show you what it looks like when I actually add a restriction sequence. All right, so I'm just going to add a bunch of Gs so we can see that very clearly. And now you can see that it added a restriction sequence and the code knows to add uh, these four ambiguous bases. 
Um, these are added by biological convention to make the restriction enzymes work better. So that's just something that the code knows to do. Um, and then what's really useful about this PyDNA library, the way it's displaying it, is you can see where the primer is binding and you can see the overhang of the restriction sequence. So that's something that's gonna be really useful to the user. Um, you can see it in the reverse primer and the forward primer. So they know, okay, my primer, the actual part that binds to the template was bound correctly. And the software installed my restriction sequence correctly as well. So I can tell that this is going to clone into the plasma that I want to clone incorrectly. Um, one more thing I want to talk about um, is a GC clamp. So a primer can't be designed if it doesn't end or in a G or a C. You can see that both of these primers do, G and C. Um, so I have here a template that actually doesn't end in G or C. So I added on a bunch of A's at the end of this one, just so I can demonstrate. So what the code does is it takes the first 20 base pairs and then it tries to design a primer off of that. But if you don't have a G or C clamp, it'll keep going and make the primer longer until it actually finds a G or C. So this ends up being like a really long primer and it's a good way to just show an example of what the code does when it doesn't reach a GC clamp. So I'm going to go ahead and load that in. Um, this is the file that I need, I'm just gonna copy it. And then you're gonna see uh, the primer in action actually. Um, so I'm going, I'm not going to add a restriction sequence so you can see. So now you can see that, yes, in fact, the, the software actually did make a really long primer. It has all the T's, but then it has one C because this ends in a G right here. So the software knows to add in a C there and then it can stop because it knows that it finally does have a GC clamp. And then you can see it uh, very clearly displayed here with that nice uh, library. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of my code. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening.